What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some new arrivals and some things that uh, are restocked at DLT Trading. If you have never checked out DLT Trading, I highly recommend them. They are, I mean, I have a lot of favorite retailers, but DLT is probably my favorite, favorite retailer. Uh, fast shipping, cool exclusives, lots of American-made stuff, lots of just good stuff in general. Um, check them out. I will link both the new arrivals page and the restocks page right down in the description so that you can go check this stuff out yourself. If you don't want to hear my voice, you don't want to look at my face, completely understandable. You can check this stuff out for yourself. But if you'd like to hear my commentary, DLT's got some pretty cool stuff, so I'll be doing that today. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to start off here. I want to point this out. These are Medford Praetorian ties. Those are the thicker ones. The T's are 125 thousandths on the scales, 190 thousandths on the blade. The tie is 190 thousandths on the scales and 250 thousandths or a quarter inch on the blade stock. Now, why these are so much more expensive, I don't know, but they almost always go for substantially more on the secondary market because Medford just doesn't make nearly as many of them. Uh, the coolest of the bunch, in my opinion, is this one right here, S35VN, titanium, blah, blah, blah. If you reduce it to just materials, of course, you're going to come up with, there's no, way that, there's no way that that's worth that. And it's really up to the individual. For a collector, somebody who just wants one, sure, they do. It's like I said, they retain their value. That's just factually what the market does with them. Um, carrying and using them, horribly inconvenient. Super thick, not, not comfortable at all. Um, probably overpriced, but then again, that's really up to the individual. So if you've been hunting a Medford Praetorian tie and you've got two grand to burn, here they are. If you are literally anybody else, you can ignore them and move on with your life. Uh, we have the Medford Marauder H frames, which are cool and way less expensive. These are in magna cut though. So I'd like to hear that Medford decided to bring that heat treat up to at least 60 for some people that's still too low. Um, I don't know though, honestly. I, I doubt it, but I, I don't know. These are Medford Praetorian GTs, which are not production Praetorians, so not like the Scout, but it is a G10 front scale and titanium back scale. So if I guess I guess if you love the Praetorian size, but it's just too heavy and you don't mind G10, these are for you. Again, for everybody else, probably not. Um, but they're there if you want. And what steel were those? S45VN. S45VN, 3V, and S35VN, and S90V, Medford seems to do great with, as far as I know. Whole bunch of injection mold plastic um, Microtech MSIs, which are definitely the way to go if you plan to customize the knife, because literally everything else about the knife is exactly the same, outside of the scale material, and you're paying a lot more for G10, or, uh, do they come in aluminum? over the injection mold plastic. $176, as low as 176 bucks for some of these. The color legitimately doesn't even matter if you plan to customize it. Just grab the one that's available and then pick up something from Original Goat, who is a company that makes scales in the United States, like aluminum and titanium. I have Original Goat Gunstock aluminum scales on my MSI and it has transformed that knife. It is such a mega beast. They have, I think that's aluminum. Yeah, I was just here a second ago. There it is. Yeah. If you love serrated, you love two-tone, there you go. There's an aluminum one right there. Aluminum one right there. That's definitely the way to go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, combat trodons. Those are also great. I don't want to get hung up on these. Olamic Cullery Whippersnappers. If you're going to buy from Olamic Cullery, the Whippersnapper is the way to go because the action is so phenomenal compared to the other models, at least last I heard. And also, considering these are made in the United States, yeah. Pretty good price. You're getting some cool custom elements. In some cases, you can get damage steel. These are actual custom knives, uh, and they do a great job. So take a look at those. Those are on the smaller side, but in my opinion, definitely worth it. They have an auto live wire in Magna Cut and Stonewashed. I don't know what Kershaw's doing as in terms of heat treatment for Magna Cut. I really wish every company would just, just tell us. Stop beating around the bush. <laughs> Stop being around the bush and just tell us, right? Just tell us what you're doing. We have We Vision R's in titanium. Uh, I love the Vision FG. That's and the reason I, I love the FG is because it's a, a an inexpensive version of this. But if you've ever looked at the Vision FG and thought it would be great if it was in titanium and 20 CV, it is. 
The original collaboration, not the original knife, that's by Snex, but the original collaboration was a Wii knife. 20 CV and titanium. The only thing that bothers me about this model is the placement of the clip. It's on the spine, which in my opinion is not the most optimal place for the pocket clip. You'll hear people making arguments about it. Try it for yourself. When you put it in your pocket, it's weird, right? You'll get used to it. That's true. But having the pocket clip here or here is better, in my opinion. Uh, still a great knife and absolutely worth the money. It's a more expensive Wii knife, but 316 bucks. once you have it in hand, you'll go, yeah, I'm glad I did it. Subjugator, I think that's too expensive for what it is. Cherith, doesn't look like anything special for 250 bucks. sorry. I love Wii knives, and they send me stuff for free, but I'm going to be honest, those don't look very special. Shaken, are, are those even different models? <laughs> they look the same. 240s, I have this, I, I've handled the Smooth Sentinel, I can tell you right now that 247 bucks and two, 210 is too much for that thing. I do like this, but again, I think the price is too high. This is the XL version of the Wii Thug, which comes in at almost 8 inches, probably still feels like a full-size knife. Why it's $350, I haven't the foggiest. $300, $403, come on now, right? This is cool, and if you really like it, go for it. I think this one's better priced, but the Roxy 3 is a smaller one. I want to say that's, yeah, it's 7.2 inches. Cool, though. Definitely cool. If you if you like this style of knife and you want something closer to 7 inches, I think that's fine. Uh, but that's mu a much better price tag than this. Uh, if you're going to go for the Wii Thug, go for the $351 version. But in my opinion, that should be no more than $300. The Winnie... The, the Winnie... Uh, nah, <laughs> the, the Mini Malice, $298, I think is... Um, a bit high also on that one, a little bit, but it is definitely a cool knife. And uh, this is a smaller knife, but yeah, 6.93 ounces. But because of the Ferrum Forge ergonomics here, it it feels like a much bigger knife than it actually is. If you're going to spend 300, nearly $350 on a Wii knife, I'll, t I'll tell you the two that I would buy, and they're both Snex designs. Um, the, uh, the Vision R, which we already looked at, and the Mini Buster, which is not at all a mini knife. This knife is actually eight inches overall, 160 thousandths on the blade. For those of you who own this knife, you know, you're gonna be able to echo what I'm saying. Something about this knife feels different. It feels like a different build. It does not feel like a typical Wii knife. Probably credit to Snex, whatever he did with this thing, it feels special. Uh, that is a knife that I let go and I shouldn't have. It is a super cool knife. It looks plain. It doesn't look like anything special, but when you get it in hand, you go, ah, I see. It's just, there's something different about it. It just feels like a step up from other Wii knives. So honestly, after looking at everything that we just looked at from Wii, kind of surprising DLT's got so much stuff from Wii, but after looking at everything, the one you should go for is the Wii Mini Buster. If, you, if you're looking to spend that much money with Wii knives, pick that up. They don't appear very often. They're like there for a bit and then they're gone. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna, um, if, if you're gonna buy, uh, any knife today, <laughs> I would recommend you look at Kunwu. Now, most people know, right? But if you're not familiar with Kunwu, let me help you out here. Nobody is using PM60 as a blade steel. This is an awesome blade steel. It can get really hard. And as you can see here, they're actually getting it up there. 66 to 69, I can promise you, Anybody else that you find using PM60 is probably not hitting that high. I'm not aware of anybody else using PM60, and it is absolutely a premium powder form steel. Absolutely. Uh, on top of that, this is not like them saying it's DLC, but it's just like paint or something. There are tons of companies out there that are PVD coating or even Cerakoting their blades and just calling it DLC. It's it's not. Like they're just it's just a lie. <laughs> DLC true DLC number one is always black. And you'll know because if you try to scratch it, it won't scratch. Not with, you know, anything simple. I used a uh, Torx bit, a steel Torx bit. Uh, I did this on video. I think there's still a short of this. Took a satin finished blade. I believe it's actually right here. I don't know. You're probably not going to be able to see it. But it was the AD-10. Took a bit to the AD-10. Scratched it as expected. Took a bit to uh, Kunwu's DLC. Didn't scratch it. Super tough. On top of that, it looks like it's just a flat black. This is a satin DLC, meaning it's shiny, which is also something you don't normally see. Diamond textured titanium, ambidextrous crossbar lock. We have a uh, coated, um, 
uh, milled pocket clip. Great. Overall length of eight inches, ambidextrous, all that. For 280 bucks, that's one of the best. You're not going to find too many knives out there that are priced like that that's, that are delivering that. On top of that, you don't have to get the DLC or the PM60. They do a great job with Vanax. They're one of the only companies out there working with Vanax right now. They also do a great job with, in this case, LMAX. This is orange peel, which you can't see right here. And it's doing a bad job of showing it off. But their orange peel is beautiful. You also get Timascus pivot collars. You have 60 to 62 Rockwell on LMAX. Now, if you're new and you're thinking, why wouldn't I go with the PM60? It's higher, right? It's because optimal heat treat is different for every composition. So we can't say higher the Rockwell, the better the blade across the board. It's not static like that. Depends on the composition. For example, 1095. Optimal range, 57 to 59. It depends on the blade geometry and the general use, but considering the field of use that 1095 is meant for, generally speaking, 57 to 59 is widely considered to be the optimal range. Somebody in the comments will argue with me, whatever. No matter when, if you talk about HRC and blade steel, you're inviting argument, and that's just how it is. 60 to 62 at this geometry on a pocket knife is incredible for LMAX. That's what you want. 250 bucks, this is a big knife. Almost nine inches. Really, really nice. And you can get it in satin. You can get it in DLC. Honestly, at 250 holy crap. Just get it. In, it's the same price? Get in DLC. Oh, this is a Pulsar. Standard Pulsar. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. This is the XL. Okay, but look at this, though. 20 bucks more. $19 more. I could I could so do that. Uh, the network on TV where they get like really excited about jewelry and fake watches and stuff. I could so do that. <laughs> this is authentic excitement. This is real. <laughs> Tune into the Metal, Metal Complex YouTube, YouTube channel for authentic caffeine-induced excitement. Um, but seriously, Kunwu is making some of the highest quality pocket knives on the market at this price point, easily. At some point, we will do a brand tier ranked video Kunwu will be up there in, in S tier. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Kunwu is an S tier brand, period. Still some Hermans. Why are those so much more expensive? I'll tell you why. They're made in Poland. It costs a lot more money to make them in Poland. On top of that, these are semi-custom, meaning there's a lot more handwork, a lot more hand tuning. These are definitely hand tuned, hand assembled. It takes a lot more time. Uh, regardless of the fact that the materials are similar to what you can get from China for 250 bucks. That's not all that goes into the cost. Whether or not you prefer those extra elements is your own thing, but these factually cost more money to make. Um, I've, I've narrowed that down as far as I can because that is it's the classic newcomer question, and there's nothing wrong with that question. The problem is the aggression and the um, entitlement that is, uh, is the, the um, fuel behind that question. You get so many people who are like, oh, who would ever... Rah! I know nothing about this hobby and I'm <laughs> I'm going to present that question as if it's, you know, absolute fact and everybody who feeds into it is incredibly stupid and I know everything. Like that's the, that's like if you're a new person and you you come with that energy, you're going to be met with that energy. There's a lot you don't know and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a learning process. But, you know, I always bring this up when I talk about Herman knives. Uh, just because it's a price that you don't understand, it doesn't mean that there's not a reason for it which is the case with everything. Sometimes expensive objects that have simple purposes confuse and even anger people. If it makes you angry, then I question your general intelligence, right? That sounds like the behavior of a cave person. Calm yourself down, have a Snickers, and then do a little bit of research, right? Save yourself from having an aneurysm. <laughs> I'm not watching this guy anymore. That was a personal attack. Um, but yeah, to, to people who know or people who are willing to, to learn, as the owner of eight different Herman knives, I love that company. I am I'm definitely I would consider myself a collector, and I have regularly pay way more for individual pocket knives. At the eight hundred dollar price point, Herman remains to be one of the best choices. Again, you can get a great pocket knife that will function, you know, in terms of like how well it cuts. It'll cut about the same, but the overall quality, the fitment, the finishes, right? All the little teeny tiny details and the fact that they are hand-tuned, hand-assembled, things like that. Yeah, it's they are very competitive in that sense, right? But if those things don't matter to you, to you individually, then you just ignore their existence, right? 
Um, but the fact remains, and I say fact, people who say no knife should ever cost that much are wrong. You are incorrect. And it's a um, generalized uh, statement that is based on no understanding and no research of what they're looking at. <laughs> it's going to piss so many people off. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I'm going to point it out. Uh, we have Medford Marauder H-Frames. These are DLC S45VN. Is it DLC? Last I knew, Medford was using PVD. I don't know. I would be very surprised if Medford would mislabel their coatings, right? I'm just saying, call into Medford and ask if you're about to buy something. Just make sure. Okay, we're back to the Riot PLXTs. Great buy. I highly recommend these. Absolutely recommend the Riot PLXTs. They're wonderful. Don't sleep on those. Pick your color. You're good to go. You'll love it. The lock is actuated via the pivot. Let's go to, um, where is it? Oh, restocks right here. They got a couple of cool restocks. Number one, this is going to be the knife. Mark my words. This is going to be the knife that everybody looks at and they go, oh, I don't want to buy $500. And then it's going to be gone forever. I mean, this is my guess. Maybe I'm wrong, right? I'm, I'm wrong a lot. But I feel like this is going to be the knife that everybody once and it's not sure about and then it's gone and then it pops up on ebay and then all of a sudden everybody wants it and it's too much money and then we're complaining about secondary market prices 500 dollars is a lot of money for a riot knife it does have that you know that frankenstein lock which is factually substantially stronger than just the frame lock by itself yes i've seen that video where that guy like tries to baton what you know that that creator who made that video is actually a really nice person um and uh i think their content for the most part is is pretty good that video in particular was extremely stupid. Um, that guy pounded this knife into... It's a folding knife, for one thing. This is this lock never made any... There was never a claim with this lock that it was going to withstand batoning. And also, who is batoning with a... Use a fixed blade. That's just a stupid test for a million different reasons, right? But this person did this and said, Look, these pins are slowly moving back out. And then continue to baton. If you know it, then push them back in. <laughs> Number one, you're already doing something that you shouldn't be doing with a knife. Number two, the knife is handling it, but the pins are just walking themselves out. So as long as you're not deaf, blind, and... Well, as long as you're not deaf and blind, right? And are able to sense with touch, you should... Then it should work. But should also be used for tasks that don't include batoning. So, uh, you know, if you bought into that video... May God have mercy on your soul. Um, but it doesn't mean anything. It's a fantastic lock, and it obviously can withstand abuse that is not normal for a folding knife. The T1000 that this is based on, <laughs> he's saucy today. I'm saucy every day. You get that. You listen to me, all right? I'm saucy every day. You don't know. Uh, the T1000 is what this is based on. I have that. It's a cool knife. It's freaking huge. It's way too big to carry. Way too big to carry. This guy at about 8 inches, and it's still pretty thick at 157 thousandths, makes way more sense. So you're getting a cool cool lock. You're getting 60 to 61 HRC M390, which is very good, right? You're getting a blade that's probably a little bit better for EDC versus the recurve compound Tanto that the T1000 came with. You're also getting zirconium accents and a zirconium backspacer. Honestly, I'm not super mad at that price. I really wish it was like 450 I'm not super upset. I'm also tempted to buy this one for myself. It's nice to be able to point at the camera because I know I'm pointing right into your face. <laughs> uh, there's a Microtech Cypher 2 sitting there. There's a couple of Hermans. Kind of a cool old school a combat troodon uh, or previous gen combat troodon. Amphibians serrated. Amphibians, uh, fibrins, amphibians non serrated. There's a black Injection mold MSI for 176. Don't sleep on that one. That's a good buy. Mi Micro jumbo mini Adamas. I can understand why that one's not selling, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted by it. There's still a blue full tie XM18 auto just sitting there. If blue's your favorite color, you love switch blades and you love hinder knives, then by God, have I got a knife for you? It's right there. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, some uh, auto SOCOM elites. That's pretty much it. I will link both of these pages down in the description. You guys can check this stuff out if you want. That's going to be pretty much it for today's video.
Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.